The place was white as snow It shone of purest gold It had the look of new It had the look of old I felt like I was home But I felt so far away In fear I thought to leave but felt the urge to stay Then a silence fell Like none I've ever known I stood among the million I stood there all alone his face was like the sun His eyes were like the sea His voice was like the thunder Rolling through eternity Yeah, I saw He was high and lifted up And rightfully Then a silence fell Like none I've ever known I stood among the millions I stood there all alone You know his face was like the sun His eyes were like the sea His voice was like the thunder Then from sleep awakened, I looked into the night. The darkness was overtaken by a bright and shining light. I couldn't understand it, Lord, I couldn't reason how. Then my eyes beheld him. I was in dreaming. the house of the Lord. 
It is my privilege at this time to bring to you our senior pastor of the Master's House, the Reverend Paul G. Kiggins, to bring to us the word of the Lord for this hour. Can we welcome him at this time? And praise the Lord. Love that song. Used to sing it. Praise the name of Jesus. How many want that to be your life? I saw the Lord high and lifted up and rightfully adorned. He is in heaven and he is ready to meet his people soon as it's time for us to be caught up to be with him. Isn't that an exciting thing? Amen? Let's praise him at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You welcome everybody here. Welcome everybody that is tuned in today on live stream. You're a part of this church and we want you to know that you are welcome. Amen? Amen. 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 Are you with me today? Yes, sir. A little joke today. I'm not good at jokes. <laughs> I can't remember them. And usually the punchline I forget. <laughs> but I'm going to give this a try today anyway. And maybe you'll like it. I liked it. My wife liked it. Brother Garrett liked it. So anyway. There was a preacher that was standing up preaching to thousands of people. And he said in this joke, how many of you out there are dumb? I don't mean you can't speak. I mean you're ignorant. Dumb. And nobody stood up in the midst of the thousands. And then in the very back, a gentleman stood up and he said, sir, you're dumb? And he said, no, but I didn't want you standing up there all alone. <laughs> so I worked out all right, see? I told you, I don't, I don't do jokes real well, but I like that one. It was actually Billy Graham I was listening to and uh, stuff on the radio. I love, it was quite a, he was quite a preacher. And I love, when I go in the car, I, I turn him on, on the Billy Graham channel. And I, I had my wife, I said, put that in your phone so I can remember it. So in my notes, you see joke. <laughs> Billy Graham, dumb joke. So I could remember it. So it worked out okay, you laughed. You might have done it to make me feel better, but it worked out. Anyway, today's message is on the prodigal son. I want you to think on this today, and we're going to have, again, some special things, a few special pictures, as we had last week with the three Hebrew children. How many enjoyed that? So this is what I have wanted to do for years, is to have a little 
special effects with the preaching because it helps to remember that message and visual effects and those type things always help so anything that helps it's good to remember and I want you to remember these messages so anyway I thank brother Garrett he worked hard to get something that could go along with this message so Luke the 15th chapter verse 11 and 12 please and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion, which was one third, of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto, his, unto them his living. Sin. We have right now the transgender. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how many looked it up on YouTube from three years old on up, PBS. Did anybody look that up? I mentioned it. Anybody? Did you look it up for your children? Your children, your parents, your grandparents, your uncles, aunts, and your nannies, your anybody that babysits your children, you should know that this is what they are showing to your children and it is uh, what do you call them babe? Drag queens. Huh? Drag queens. Drag queens. And they are reading the book to your children on PBS. Look it up. See what's going on because in school Things are going to come if they haven't come already to Colorado. And it's in other states and all. And we have teachers that will watch for this. But parents and all need to know what's going on. And you should know the curriculum, certainly, of what's being taught on television and so on, even cartoons. And this young man wanted his inheritance, and he wanted it right now. So he went, and those that, he said, I want to go to the city rather than living in the farm. And he went to the city. And those that he fell in with, like the way it is today, they parted with him so long as he had his inheritance and money. Then when it ran out, he was alone and had nothing. You see, there they were, partying. And this is the way it goes. I want it. And I want it now. And then people realize, man, what did I do? What did I do? Sin, the only vaccine in the blood, the only vaccine in the blood Body God gave them of Jesus Christ. It's the blood of the Lord. That's the only vaccine for sin. The only vaccine is repentance and being baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptism in water in Jesus' name. Repent of sin. Be baptized in his name. 
and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's what we read in Acts 2.38. We read in Acts 1.8, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power for what? Power to make it. Most of all. Power to live. When you got to live when there is such sin in the world. You know, look. Look at what goes on in the world. I want to party. I want to live it up. I want to do everything out there I can do. And people do that even before they go to church. All through the week sometimes. And on a Saturday night. I know because I've talked to other pastors. And they said, you know, I don't know what to preach because my flock on Saturday night goes out and parties. And I said, you preach the truth. And this great flock, I don't believe, very few, if any, do that. And I'm not saying you're better than anybody else. I'm just saying this has been preached on and taught because I love you. And God loves you. And you do not compromise the word of God. And when there are drag queens that your two-year-olds on up are reading books on PBS. Look it up. And like my sweet daughter who is pregnant. And I'm very thankful that she has said, I am going to watch every single thing I can. So my child, and Michael too, does not on television, in books, or anything else, I'm going to do my absolute best to guard against these things. And there are others here that have young children that have said the same thing. So... Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That this is the way you look at it. Because it is an evil world. And the Bible said, Woe to those that give suck in those days. And we are in it. And it's only going to get worse. And those that want to have children, they just need to be aware of what's going on. I'm not saying don't have children. I'm saying be aware. And you may not want to have children. Or if you do have children, be aware. It is a different age and a different time than it used to be. There was a time where none of this stuff went on. But it's going on today. And when we read about the, this parable... Where the son wanted his one third to go to the city. And to live it up. Then what did he do? After he had nothing. Let's read Hebrews the 11th chapter. Verse 24 and 25. By faith. By faith. When Moses, he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Let's talk about this sin a little bit. A man walked into a bank one day and held a gun at the teller. He told her to fill the bag with money. She did. So he was robbing this bank. The teller filled the bag with money. But when the robber, what the robber didn't know 
was she put a dye, dye bomb in the bag and it was covered, it covered all the money in the bag. When he put his hand into the bag and touched the money, the dye went everywhere, including his hand and the money. It just completely covered everything and he couldn't get it off. This is sin. This is sin, folks. It covers us and we can't get it off. The only way we get it off is repentance. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Sin is evil. You know, we say, well, you know, it's just sin for a season. I can do this and, you know, pastor's not going to know. That's not what matters. The Lord's going to know. Amen. You know, we're, when I pray, I pray for the flock. I pray for my wife. I pray for myself that, Lord, let me be what I need to be. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb every single night. Because if I have said or done anything that I shouldn't have done, I want to make it right with God. I do not want that the Lord would come or I would leave this world and not be ready. Amen. I want to be ready, folks, and so should you. Amen. So should you. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. So should you. Out there, we're near a life stream. Think about this. A die bomb. What an illustration. What an illustration where something happens where it's honest, we can't get it off. That's sin. The only thing that can get sin off of us is to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. To come to the altar of the Lord and to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. To have your time in your closet of prayer and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. We've got to take time for that every single day. As a preacher, to be preaching to the flock as a man of God who loves his flock, God's people, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't compromise the gospel for one reason. Because I'm going to answer to God for every single one of God's people. Every single one. My neurologist told me this last Thursday when I went to him, he said, because I spend a couple hours at night before I go to sleep. And I had to explain this to him because he said, I think you are taking too much uh, upon you of the church when you go home. I said, let me tell you something. This is God's people. And I'm going to take that two hours or whatever the time is, and I'm going to pray because I am, nobody's around me that my wife is, a, she's asleep and she doesn't bother me. She is asleep. And I'm glad she's asleep and well because she has prayed. She prays in the morning. And I like to pray at night. And if the Lord deals with me, I pray in the morning as well. But I pray because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I want to be a righteous man. And I want to read the word. I have trouble reading because I get such migraines. So I listen to it. Thank God that we can go on the phone or whatever it is and listen to the Word of God. So it's difficult to read, but I still try. 
And at least when it's on the phone, I can go verse by verse. So, you know, the Lord always makes a way. Does he not? I I only got a few pages today. The police cried. There was no denying, as there will be with the Lord, it was him. Because the die was all over him, just as sin is all over us. It was very easy to see. You know, we may, feel, we may fool a lot of people, but we never fool God. But oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Thank God that he went to Calvary and he paid the price. He paid the price. He paid the price. And every drop of blood that he shed mattered. Because you and I, and even the one on the cross next to him, he said, remember me when you go to your kingdom. And he said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Remember that. Remember that. If we die even. If the Lord were to come and take you that day. Or if we're just asleep in the Lord. As Samuel. My father when I was just a boy. I said father. What happens to people when they die? And he said, Greg, it's like this. It's like when you go to sleep and you wake up. It's that quick. And you have a dream or something like that. But you wake up and God takes you. It's that quick. And I remember that still yet. Because Paul said, Look, why do you cry and weep? For this one who is dead. For they will rise. When the Lord comes. And they will be taken. Up to heaven. For they are not dead. They were only asleep in Christ. Can you praise the Lord for that today? Luke 15, verse 13 and 14. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took the journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. That's the way it is. You know, the world, things only last so long. And then we are in want. And then what? So this young man parties it up, spends everything, everything. And in this way, in this way, what? Once he has no money left, everyone leaves him. That's the way it is. He has nothing left and he is all alone. Yeah, that's the way it is. And it says what? Luke 15, 15 through 17. And he went and sojourned himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him. And to the fields to feed swine. There you go. He was with the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with husk. And the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. That's it. That's it. 
And when he came to himself, oh, thank God. When he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare even? And I spare, perish with hunger? He came to himself. Today, let us come to himself. If we are depressed, if we are down and out, I want you to look at this picture. He was down and he was eating with the swine. Brother Garrett, you did a beautiful job with this. Because that's the way it was. Down with the animals. With the swine, even. And, you know, we kind of think about this in reality. We think, you know, well, I'll be fine. Even the servants in my father's house have it much better than this. Thank the Lord. He came to himself. Luke 15, verse 18 through 20. I will arise and go to my father. Thank God. Thank God we come to himself and we say, Lord. Lord, we're, we've come to ourselves and we need you. We want you. And what does the Lord say? He doesn't deny us. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great far away, his father saw him and had compassion. Is not that not the Lord? And ran and fell on his neck. And kissed him. Oh the love of the father. Our heavenly father. The mercy. The compassion. Undeserved. Love and mercy. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. There you go. This is how it is. Undeserving. We say, Lord, I'm undeserving. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Lord. You received me. Oh, Lord. We're so undeserving of you. But the compassion, the love, and how many times have we said, Lord, I don't feel deserving, but please, I'm coming to you, and he comes to you, and he kisses you, and puts his arms around you, and the blood of the Lord has been shed for you on Calvary. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Luke 15, 21 through 24. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring upon his hand. Oh, hallelujah. And shoes on his feet. And bring here the fatted calf. And kill it. And let us eat. And be merry. For this my son was dead. And he is alive again. And he was lost. And is found. 
and they begin to be merry. This is the Lord, folks. This is the Lord. This is, of course, is a symbolic of Christ with us. The mercy, the forgiveness, open arms to us as children. Can we thank him today? Just about done, it's the last page. Psalm 136, 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, thank God. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. Has thou, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, that the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not, Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Ah, hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Let us rejoice this day that we can say as children of the Lord, thank you, Jesus, for I was lost but now I am found. God bless you. Shall we stand? Thank you for your attention today. God bless those on live stream. I hope this has been a blessing to you and As we open up this altar, as the Lord receives you and wraps his arms around you, no matter what the situation is, no matter what one has done, God loves everyone. He is there for everyone. And whatever today you need the Lord to do, I want you to come to the altar and the assistant pastors. If you would please come at this time. I thank the Lord for his strength. And he has made me able to speak today. It is an honor to me every time that I can come and stand behind this pulpit. And to preach the word of the Lord. And when I think of this young man who came to himself and then went to the father and the father received him and kissed him and put a ring upon his finger, a robe around him, sandals upon his feet, killed the fatted calf and said, let us be merry for my son which was dead now liveth. Friends, whatever you have done, the Lord is here to receive you today because he loves you from the smallest to the greatest. Whatever you need God to cleanse, today he is here. So all, let's come to the altar and be prayed for and let God 
move and have his way. God bless you. What a wonderful message today. And we hope that something that has been said or done has been a blessing to you and your family. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is alive and well today, and by him all things are possible. So if you have a prayer request, please email us at prayer at mastershouse.org. Our senior pastor and assistant pastors will go before the Lord on your prayer request and pray God's perfect will be done in your life. Where two or more agree, there is Jesus in the midst. And when Jesus is in the midst, there is no limit to what he can do. And if you're new and you want to be a part of the Master's House ministry, please visit our website at mastershouse.org slash I'm dash new. And click the stay connected so you can be notified of all the upcoming events, outings, and activities that happen here at the Master's House as we strive to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ around the world. May God bless you and keep you, and we hope to see you again at our next service.